Gojo versus Makima. The strongest sorcerer versus the control devil. Death Battles 183rd episode, and my personal favorite episode of the entire show. This episode released a year ago by the time I released this video. How could something so recent top the entire show for me? Well, on the anniversary of the episode, I wanted to reanalyze it, to talk about what makes it so special to me. So grab your popcorn and sit down for Gojo versus Makima. <laughs> Love this part. First, why are these two characters compared? Hell, who even are they? I'm glad you asked. Satoru Gojo is one of the secondary characters of the manga Jujutsu Kaisen, written by Gege Akatami. In the story, Gojo serves as the main mentor figure, and the strongest character in the verse. Makima, the control devil, is the main antagonist of the first part of Tatsuki Fujimoto's Chainsaw Man serving as a mentor figure to the main character, Denji. But unlike Gojo, is a lot more manipulative, only seeing Denji as a means to an end, as her main goal is to use the Chainsaw Devil to create an ideal world without fear and bad movies. If you can't really pick up the connective tissue there, let me explain. Both are mentor figures to teenagers that were thrust into a world full of monsters that embody concepts, curses, and devils. The two are often stated to be the strongest characters in their verse, and they rival in their sense of ideals. Gojo seeks to improve his society, while Makima seeks to destroy and start anew. It's an interesting comparison, especially helped with the fact that this matchup has been debatable for a long time. The G1 blog did this matchup twice, and it was insane looking into the arguments for both sides. So much so that it was one vote in favor of Gojo for the blog. Do you not realize how insanely rare that is? So I was always down to see this matchup. I love both series. JJK way more than Chainsaw Man, but I still love both, and Gojo was in my top three favorite characters of all time, so I was really excited to see him get talked about. This matchup was my most wanted until it was announced, albeit it always clashed with two others in that top three. Ellie vs. Clementine, and the one we will talk about in a few weeks, give it time. So now, with the context established, let's get into the episode itself. <laughs> Confident, strong, and idiotic. We'll be sure to write it on your tombstone. Gojo's analysis is really good. It serves as a good introduction to the verse, but also goes into Gojo's reputation within the series. It does a very good job explaining all of Gojo's unique abilities, especially how thanks to the panel usage. The motion graphics here are insane. I know a major complaint people have is the lack of Gojo's story being talked about, which is fair, but I also think you gotta keep in mind the point at which Gojo's story was at. Gojo for a long time, and most likely by the time this was being written, had been sealed within the prison realm, and only just then was fighting Sukuna. So most story stuff could only be talked about before him being sealed, which they do a good job of. I do wish they elaborated more on his friendship with Ghetto, but I still think it works. It's very weird that Yuji's name isn't spoken once, though. That's insane. Makima's analysis seems to be the preferred analysis for this episode, and honestly, I can't disagree. It's nice getting to see a character mainly rep through their manga panels rather than the anime, as Chainsaw Man hasn't progressed that far anime-wise. I also think it does a way better job of explaining her story, given her story was actually complete by the time the episode was made. All around, great analysis. Good jokes, good motion graphics, sound design, it all works. <laughs> Domain expansion. Ah! Unlimited void. The fight begins in a theater, as Makima, played by Kelsey Jaffer, eats popcorn, watching the goaded Samurai Jack vs. Afro Samurai, only to be quickly interrupted by this fucker, played by Gianni the Goat Machurgano eating her popcorn, coughing and laughing over the movie. Gojo drops this baller ass line. But, gotta kill you instead. Can't just let a curse do as they please. So obviously he's not flying out of the theater and into the rest of what appears to be a mall. Makima shoots at her control chains, grabbing the zombies accompanying her, throwing them straight at Gojo, who easily disperses of them with a few punches, using Laps Blue to crush Makima, only for her to regenerate and hit him with a sword, which as Gojo says, Womp womp. Ah! 
Makima regenerates once again, reminding Gojo of her superiority, treating him like a toddler telling him to be careful, mocking him, only for Gojo to ignore her comments, reassuring her he is the strongest. Makima shrugs off his comment, calling him an idiot for standing there and not killing her when he had the chance, disappearing and throwing several weapons toward Gojo. That obviously don't work because haha, infinity. However, this was merely a distraction, as she summons the Fox Devil to eat Gojo, only for him to escape once again, killing Makima again, only for her hybrid devils to begin attacking, such as the Flamethrower Devil, who is very easily countered by infinity. Gojo defeats several zombies, using blue to pull Makima toward him, only for her to finally get a hit in with Bang. Now before I continue with the rest of this fight, I'd like to establish how these characters are feeling at the time of the fight. Come join me in... This fight presumably takes place before both of these characters' major fights in their series. Gojo is most definitely taken from before Shibuya, as he still has his Season 1 appearance, while Makima is most definitely taken from before her fight with Pochita, given we see her use the Fox Devil. Both of these characters are at their peak of their confidence. Makima has control of most devils on her side, while Gojo is still at the top of the food chain in Jujutsu society, as he hasn't been sealed yet and Sukuna isn't as big of a threat. I think this is shown super well, thanks to this entire fight feeling like a tug of war between an unstoppable force and an immovable object. Gojo is never phased by anything Makima uses in this entire fight, constantly laughing and asserting his dominance as the strongest. And who can blame him? His infinity resists most things Makima throws at him. But that pisses off Makima to no end. Despite her constantly trying to make Gojo fear her, calling him stupid, constantly regenerating, and throwing more and more things at him, but none of it works. Her control of the fight is being questioned more and more, so when she finally gets that hit in, Bang. it's hilarious to her. Gojo's been constantly asserting his superiority here, and yet here he is, vulnerable and unable to counter her attack, on his knees with no escape. Makima won. But Gojo isn't without his tricks. While he is controlled for a short time, he breaks out, stating, Should I bark too? I'm getting really tired of your pets. Using his domain and barrier to incinerate Makima's army and immobilizing her, as she is unable to do anything. Unable to regenerate, she screams in agony. The control devil lost control. How ironic. This fight in its entirety is asking the question, who wears the crown? Who is superior? And as it turns out, the strongest sorcerer had what it take to take Makima down for good. It's an excellently written fight, and honestly, it's why I'm glad they removed the extra scene from the storyboard, because it take away from the fight's themes. So yeah, the fight's peak. While I do think it's short, it's made up for it given that they get to use a lot of their abilities. Makima gets a fair few devils, has Bang, her contract, etc. While Gojo gets to use his domain, red, blue, and infinity to counter all of it. As for the conclusion, I think it's very well explained for a matchup that's very debatable. I know people disagree with it, and honestly, I don't care. People can be annoying all they want. Argue with the wall. This episode is not perfect by any means, nor is it the definitive episode of the show. But when you ask me, someone who wanted to see this fight done justice, I love it. It perfectly encapsulates what I wanted to see out of the matchup. It is my favorite episode of Death Battle. For now, anyway, let's see what Joker vs. Jorno has in store. Happy birthday, Gojo vs. Makima.